Good afternoon, asteroid enthusiasts, and welcome to another bulletin of the Angry Astronauts. And in an incredibly positive turn of events, NASA has once again demonstrated that if you spend enough time looking at an asteroid, you can make it not hit the Earth. Okay, well, that's a bit unfair. The real news is that after a number of analyses of 2024 YR4 were made, which successively increase the possibility of this asteroid hitting the Earth, a couple of very recent and very quick analyses of this asteroid reduce the chances dramatically. The first one reduced the chance to 1 in 67, and then 24 hours later, NASA determined that the odds of this asteroid striking the Earth were down to 1 in 360, and NASA continues to assure us that just just as they predicted, eventually the chances of this asteroid hitting the Earth will be reduced to a virtually non-existent chance of impact. However, I find it very interesting that it took a mere 48 hours for the odds of impact to drop so precipitously after weeks and weeks of analyses had increased the chances of impact. Just very odd to me that we would gain so much new data in such a short amount of time over a period of just a couple of days of additional trajectory for this asteroid to suddenly become so unlikely to hit the Earth. However, I'm not going to distrust NASA's conclusions or their data or anything. We'll go ahead and go with what the current data shows, but we also need to emphasize that in spite of what NASA says, this asteroid is still very dangerous. And it's not just this asteroid either. In 2029, as most of us know, our planet is going to have an extremely close encounter with a much, much more dangerous asteroid. An asteroid that could cause huge disruption to our civilization and plunge the planet into a new ice age if it ends up colliding, as opposed to the near miss that NASA is predicting right now. And honestly, I think this new news has made these asteroids actually more dangerous then less so. We're going to find out why in just a moment. This is Apophis, an asteroid that used to dominate the news until this new asteroid came along, but it is no less dangerous. And to be clear, this is actually a digital animator's best idea of what Apophis looks like based on radar data that we've accumulated about this asteroid over the last several years. But really, we have no exact idea of what this asteroid really looks like. We've never really seen it up close. As a matter of fact, we can't see it at all right now. Apophis is lost in the sun's glare, which makes it one of the more dangerous kinds of near-Earth objects because its orbit carries it behind the sun on a pretty regular basis, meaning that if it does have a slight trajectory shift, as it very well might, we have no idea that that shift is actually taking place until it comes into our view again. And by the way, in the case of this particular asteroid, we're not going to get another good look at it until 2027, two years prior to its close approach. And also to be clear, this is the first time that an asteroid of this size has passed this close to our planet in recorded human history. Thousands and thousands of years of history where this sort of close approach has not happened and now all the sudden in our lifetimes it will. And that alone should teach us a very important lesson. Just because a major asteroid impact hasn't happened in our recent memory or even in recent recorded human history doesn't mean that it can't happen right here right now. And a major asteroid impact is absolutely bound to happen sometime in the next few centuries or in the next few millennia at the very very, very latest, regardless of what the odds might say. And therefore, we need to be better prepared 
prepared for these things than we currently are. If, for example, we were to spot an asteroid like Apophis approximately two or three weeks away from impact, and that kind of scenario is far from impossible, by the way, because even though NASA has a pretty good idea of where about 80% of the gigantic planet-killing asteroids are in near-Earth orbit, we actually have no idea as to where at least 50 to 60% of the Apophis-sized asteroids are, well, if this were to happen and we saw one of these asteroids a few weeks away from hitting our planet, we would be completely unable to stop it. Utterly powerless. There's no way to get a mission prepared that quickly. Indeed, if we even saw an asteroid like this within six months to maybe even a year from impact, even then, it would be very unrealistic to think that we could do anything about it. Whereas, if we had an interceptor of some kind ready to go in low Earth orbit, or even preferably in lunar orbit, just in case something like this were to happen, then yes, Yes, we could definitely deflect an asteroid, even if detection came very, very late in the process. So it becomes much more frustrating to me when NASA either rules out or rules very unlikely an impact from an asteroid that's been in the news a lot, because it seems to say to all of us, see, we told you so, this was never anything to be concerned about. With more information, we learn that doomsday isn't just around the corner and never will be, so we don't really have to spend any of your hard-earned tax dollars on preventing something like this from happening when we all know it isn't going to happen anyway. And really, there's a great deal of evidence to suggest that these sorts of things happen a lot more often than we might think. The famous Tunguska event of 1908 might have been something that occurred quite a number of times in the past several centuries, but historians and scientists of the time had no understanding of what had just happened, and so it was never reported as an asteroid impact, but rather some sort of mysterious fire that swept over a huge area of countryside. Because keep in mind, the Tunguska impact never actually was an impact at all. There was no crater, no physical evidence whatsoever of an asteroid hitting in the Tunguska region of Siberia, and many scientists actually disputed that this was an asteroid at all, and they stubbornly stuck to some sort of strange volcanism or other phenomena, but the reason that there was no sign of impact and no crater is because the Tunguska meteor, and actually it was more probably a fragment of a comet, air bursted over the Siberian forest and created a much more devastating explosion in the process without actually leaving a crater. And there are a number of historical records of massive fires breaking out in different regions of the world world with no obvious explanation that may have been caused by a similar airburst, to say nothing of the airburst that may have happened over regions of ocean that were never reported as such. And indeed, there may also have been impacts in the ocean that we are still unaware of that created devastating tsunamis that were previously attributed to earthquakes, volcanoes, or something else, but actually were the result of asteroids striking our planet. My point is, these things may be happening a lot more frequently than we think, and it could very well be that we are overdue for another Tunguska-sized disaster. And that is exactly the sort of disaster that 2024 YR4 would create. As a matter of fact, it could be substantially worse. And then a Pophis level disaster would be even worse still, simply because a Pophis is a a gigantic rock in space. And it's not just a rock, it's also a nickel-iron asteroid, one of the most dense and heavy types of asteroids out there, as opposed to 
a rubble pile type asteroid like the one the DART mission deflected, meaning that it could be even more difficult to knock off its course, especially if we have to try to do it at the last moment. Keep in mind, Apophis is 450 meters in diameter. It has a mass, as you can see, of approximately 20 million tons, with a density of 2.6 tons per cubic meter, traveling at a speed of 12.6 kilometers per second. That's almost 37 times the speed of sound. And anything that big impacting at that speed is going to create a tremendous blast. We're talking four gigatons worth of TNT, which is more destructive power than the active nuclear arsenals of the United States and Russia combined. An impact like this on land would be utterly devastating, destroying an area, completely annihilating an area, actually the size of Connecticut and also throwing up enough dust, soot, and debris into the upper atmosphere to cause a long-term climate shift on the planet. As a matter of fact, the last time something this big hit the Earth, it caused an unexpected ice age that was at the end of the Pleistocene period when the Earth was starting to warm up and then all of a sudden became devastatingly cold for about a century century. And also during this time, many of the largest predators in North America, such as the saber-toothed tiger, the cave bear, and others, vanished forever as a result of this impact. But I've talked about that a number of times on this channel. Something else I would like to discuss also is what might happen if this asteroid hit the ocean, which, given its projected path of impact, actually would be quite likely, assuming that an impact actually Actually took place. A simulation of an Apophis impact off the west coast of the United States was actually created several years ago when people were a little bit more concerned about this asteroid and the consequences of an ocean impact would be cataclysmic. We're talking the same level of destruction as the famous 2004 tsunami that caused so much damage in Southeast Asia from Sri Lanka to to Thailand, to Indonesia, a wide variety of places, except a lot worse. The damage done in Sri Lanka was from a run-up height of about four to eight meters on the tsunami. This thing could deliver a run-up of 16 meters or more to some of the most populated regions of the United States. A tsunami of this magnitude would cause the same devastation to the coast of Canada and Mexico as happened to Sri Lanka in 2004 and much much worse damage to the entire west coast of the United States, all the way from Seattle to San Diego. We're not talking about a relatively limited area of impact as, say, a super quake in San Francisco or in Los Angeles might cause. We're talking about devastation down the entire length of the western seaboard. Devastation that might very well crash the economy of this region to say nothing of the loss of life. And so this is why I continue to make these videos, because every time NASA tells us that there's no reason to be alarmed, every time they quote, rule out, unquote, a possible impact from a dangerous asteroid, well, then there is no impetus, no incentive whatsoever for us to try to do anything about it with any sense of urgency. And in my opinion, that is a very, very bad idea. An impact of a very small rock with Apophis or a close encounter with a larger asteroid whose gravitational influence over Apophis Office just causes a slight, slight shift in its trajectory could put this rock on a collision course with our planet all over again. And as I said before, we're not going to know exactly where this rock is going until 2027 when it comes out of the sun's glare. And a two-year time frame to get an interception mission ready is very, very tight timing indeed. It would probably be unrealistic to expect that we 
could reliably get anything ready to knock this asteroid off course if we absolutely had to on that short of a time frame. So we need to be getting ready for these sorts of things now just in case something like this comes up because it absolutely will. And 2024 YR4 is just as serious of a threat in many ways. Even though it won't cause as much devastation, currently, even with NASA's new estimates, its chances of hitting this planet are much, much greater than the chances of Apophis making impact. And here's another interesting detail. According to NASA's new estimates, even though the chances of this asteroid hitting the Earth have dropped off precipitously, the chances of it hitting the Moon have actually increased to a little over a 1% chance, and an impact with the Moon would still be a serious event. The equivalent of a 7 to 50 megaton explosion on the surface of the Moon would blast a huge amount of debris, we're talking thousands and thousands of tons of debris at the very least, to lunar escape velocity or faster, and most of that debris is going to be captured by Earth's gravity and will end up crashing into our planet a few days later. If you want more information about that event, well, I have a video linked at the end of this one. So I hope I've made my point. I hope that NASA doesn't take this new data as a reason to just ignore the problem for a while, and I think the public very likely is is going to interpret it that way. So it really is up to agencies like NASA to take this problem seriously and to actually do something about it, even if it does cost a substantial amount of taxpayer dollars, dollars that the taxpayers themselves may not feel is being wisely spent until they find out exactly why we spent it in the first place. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. As I've mentioned a couple of times before, I have some new merch coming out, a brand new merch company that I'm working with that does the merch for Ellie in Space. They do beautiful quality stuff, and I'm giving away one piece of merch to a random Patreon supporter and one to a random Super Chat supporter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to up it a little bit. I'll give away one piece of merch to a Patreon supporter this month and the week that remains and another one next month. So double the prizes. So if you want to support this channel, all the details are in the description. Thanks again. And as always, stay angry about space.